Might have missed it this morning, but you don't have to miss it this afternoon because she busted her boyfriend's PlayStation. He was playing it too much, so she just completely destroyed it and came clean with him over the weekend. If you miss this, our show is in podcast form every day, so you can listen to each and every segment or you can listen to the entire show if you got the time. Check it out online, birdshow.com slash podcast. Right, so this email here, she is really worried that her friend's kids are going to, like, grow up illiterate if she doesn't step in and do something about it. But is she over? Is she going over her boundaries, I guess, is her question. Bert Show, some of my best friends have been staying with my family while they look for their own house. This past weekend, I kept their two kids, 11 and 9, while they went out of town. I love these kids as my own. However, since they've moved in, I've gotten a good look at their day-to-day lives. Here's my dilemma. They are homeschooling their kids. And she put homeschooling in quotations. I don't have a problem with homeschooling. In fact, I was homeschooled my whole life and plan on homeschooling my kids. But their kids have no structure, no set curriculum. And worst of all, the nine-year-old hasn't been taught to read? At nine? Who? Their excuse has been that he started kindergarten in the fall of 2019, and when COVID hit, he was pulled from public school and switched to online. Neither of the parents actually sat with him and helped him. Since then, neither of the kids have been enrolled in school. I'm worried that if they don't push him to learn now, it's going to get harder as they get older. The older child can read, write, and do some math. But the nine-year-old basically has no education except what he's picked up watching YouTube and he can write his name. I'd rather you know nothing. <laughs> yes. Not be able to read or then learn everything that you know in life off of YouTube. I'm struggling if I should say something to the parents. Uh, no, it's not really my place, but I can't shake the nagging feeling that these kids are going to be in big trouble later in life if no one does anything. The situation hit home for me because around eighth grade, my parents left me to my own devices and I had to teach myself nearly everything I know. I barely passed my GED and I now have thousands of dollars in student loans because I had to take so many remedial math classes. The difference is that I at least got those early education years and because I knew how to read, I was able to progress on my own as well as I could. Their mother knows my background but doesn't seem to register that she's doing the same thing to her kids. They're allowed to do whatever they want during the day. Watch YouTube, play video games. Their attention spans are like a fly in a cow pasture. It's hard to watch them waste away the days on their tablets. They are smart, capable kids. They just need more structure. So, should I bring this up to my friends? And if so, how? I've offered to help with their curriculum before, But my friend never seems interested in accepting the help. It doesn't seem right to just start teaching them without their parents' consent. I'm particularly uh, particularly interested in hearing what the mamas of the Burt Show, Kristen and Cassie, think. Uh, thanks for any advice. Love you guys. Thanks for letting us off the hook. <laughs> oh, appreciate that. You have kids too, <laughs> Herbert. Didn't see, didn't want me. Uh, That's fine with me. <laughs> Taking oh, a back seat on this one. Totally buddy. okay. One eight five five Burt Show. What do you guys got? Oh man, I. I feel like she should intervene. I just know it's not going to be well received. Would you? What? Would you intervene? I would try to find a way to intervene in as a non-confrontational, coming from a good place, not coming, not trying to be judgy, don't want you to take offense and think that I'm crapping on your parenting, even though I am. Because that's essentially what she's doing. Like, you're being a bad parent and you're not teaching your kids. Yeah, let's work this out for a second. So let's take the scenario that you're talking about. Then, Cassie, I'm coming to you. I'm coming after you, girl. (laughs) Um, So you want to do right and you want to talk to the mom. Hmm. How are you opening this? Tell me the exact words you're using to open this conversation without her being pissed. Okay. Hey, Carol, how are you doing today? What do you mean? (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean I'm a bad parent? (laughs) How are you reading my mind? Oh, geez. Okay. Hey, Carol, um, you know how much I love you and I love your kids. I've uh, enjoyed having you guys here while you're all looking for a home and really have gotten to see like the inner workings of your family. And there was something I noticed, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, 
so it 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 looks like Jake, even though he's nine, hasn't really grasped reading yet. Um, have you talked to your pediatrician about any like roadblocks he may be having? And is there anything I can do to like help since you guys are here under my roof? Uh, no, we've tried everything. He's just stupid. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, what? All right. Yeah. Do it. Well, I'm going to go call DFAX real quick. <laughs> and um, I'll meet you and the, yeah, the, the child code counselor here in the living room in just a minute. Yes. I'm pretty sure if they're homeschooling, they still have to pass certain tests by the, like, that are put forth by the state. Like, I you thought can't, so, too. You can't just willy-nilly be like, I'm homeschooling and then not do anything. I'd probably tar- start teaching the kid myself. Self because it's so, I don't think this is an area where it, that's a violation. Like, oh, I taught your kid how to read. How dare I? <laughs> so I'd probably <laughs> call te- the cops. Yeah, on right. It. Like it, it's, it, yeah, you should be able to read. I'd probably t- start teaching the kid myself. Or if I had kids, I'd be like, hey, you know, every Tuesday, um, Hazel and I have a little study session. You want Jake to come on over and we'll just hang out and study. Take him off your hands for a while. You can do whatever you want and start that way. And then I would probably also, there's like a school, I think in in California, of course, that assigns YouTube videos as homework from this one institute, this one academy that they're like 15 minute videos. And then they do the homework in class the next day together. So they're taught at night and then they do the problem solving with the teacher the next day. So what I'm saying is I would find how to like videos on how to read on YouTube Mm -hmm. and start sending the nine year old those videos. That way, like he's already um, picked up on how to write his name from YouTube videos. There are some really good educational ones out there. So that's kind of a way to circumvent it. So this is the college I would go to in a situation like this. And it's STFU. I would not say a word. Nothing. I want to acknowledge that you guys are much better people than I am because I would stay the hell out of it. (laughs) No way. You wouldn't say anything? Nothing. This is about, but this is about, I wouldn't at this point, it's for the kid though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's, the kid is going to, it's detrimental to the child. Uh, There could be bullying down the line, but he's going to be behind. So for me, like this is the part of it takes a village. Your kid is in danger in some way. It's not mortal physical danger, but. That whole like it takes a village thing is so old school. Parents, these parents are going to be so offended if you try to lend a hand in this area. Good. Shame them. At this point, I'm sorry, unless your kid has learning disabilities, which is a very real thing. If Mm -hmm. your kid is not reading because of neglect, because you're homeschooling them and you're not doing a good enough job. You should be mad and you should feel some kind of way about it. And you should be also, at the end of the day, honored that somebody else cares about your kid that much. I normally would STFU, but because they're under my roof and I'm witnessing it and they're staying with Mm. me, Mm. I would feel an obligation to step in. Like, this is the universe's Mm. way of having me intervene Mm. because they are staying with me. So I need to figure out a way that I can help that's not going to, you know, that's not going to put the mom off and make her mad, but maybe we can work together to solve this. I wouldn't say anything either, but I would do it myself. If I had the time to do it, then I would just do it. Or I would try to find ways to start to implement structure, but I wouldn't say anything at all to the parent because I would feel like it's going to make it awkward for you to come to me and tell me, why are you helping my kid? Because, I mean, who doesn't want help? Hey, Barbara, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are y'all? Fantastic. Thank you. What's up? Love the show. Listen to every day. Um, hey, I just want to let you guys know, I... Um, have a comment on the this what y'all talking about right now about the children. Um, I have two grandchildren and they are um, or they were um, 11 and 12 at the time and they were homeschooled. They've been homeschooled all their life. And I kept telling my son over the years. I kept saying they cannot read. We'd go out to eat and I said they can't read. I'm telling you. He said no, mom. They can read. She's teaching them at home. And so. It come to find out, um, they, I finally told my son, I said, would you take the children one at a time into a room and have each take a book in there? You know they could read like first grade book and have them to read to you and just let them see what they can do. I don't know if he did that or not, but right after that, and, um, he um, said, we've got to put these kids in school. They've got to go to school. And um, she, what, what they found out was that she was not teaching them properly and she also would, like, do their homework or their, their papers for them and send them in. Mm. Well, about them having to be held accountable to somebody in the state, we reached out to the senators, congressmen, mm. everyone in our state. We even called the school district. We called DSS. We called everybody to try to find out what we could do. And they said that 
in the state of South Carolina that you cannot, um, they cannot make someone um, hold them accountable for their children, even though they are homeschooling them, because it depends on the program that she has those children in. And so she did not have to take those children and have them tested ever. So the end result was finally they got them in school, and when they did, they tested the children, and after about three or four months of testing, they found out these children, these were 11 and 12-year-olds at the time, were on a pre-kindergarten level. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. And legally, there was nothing they could do about it. That's really sad. Abby, what would you do? Would you go in or are you staying out of that whole thing? Uh, For me, I don't know how I would even tell someone because they don't seem to have any kind of motivation to want their kids Mm -hmm. to have the read. It almost feels like a form of child abuse, if I'm honest with you. So I would give them a piece of my mind and then stay out of it. The Burt Show. So first, thanks for watching. Second, you like what you just watched? That just scratches the surface. Get The Burt Show on any podcast platform. We're so good.